Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. This is the first sermon of Jesus. I like to go back to the first sermon of Jesus constantly. Why? In this first sermon from Matthew 5 to Matthew 7, you look at the covert operation and the, uh, the covert thing and the overt. In other words, the hidden laws that you can use um, without being noticed. But also, there's this thing that is very obvious that we can also use. And I like to use this because Jesus was not talking to born-again believers. I like, uh, there's only one time they say born again. So I like to say new birth. The recreated man, the new humanity. Um, so when Jesus was talking to this group of people, they, they have not received the Holy Spirit. And that's why I like to tell people that before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. That what Jesus came to do on the cross was not because he came to forgive our sin. The sin of the world was forgiven before any man actually showed up. He came to demonstrate what, was a, 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 what, was, what God has been doing. God has been forgiving us. He came to demonstrate, even Apostle Peter said it, and Apostle Paul wrote about it, that the, the cross was to demonstrate what has been from the very beginning. So God did not forgive us on the cross of Calvary. He forgave us before we actually showed up. If Adam, I believe that if Adam had said, I'm sorry. Everything would have been restored. But he started blaming God. Blamed the woman. And the woman blamed the serpent. And everything was lost. And so God was trying to return them back again to the original. So when Jesus came, he didn't say, um, give your life to me. Then he preached this message. No. Now that you are forgiven, maybe you do not know this is who you are. So in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14, I'm, I just played the foundation. 15 and 16 says, yes, another way. I'm reading from the message to put it. You are here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is, not, God is not a secret to be kept. We are going public with this. As public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, verse 15, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket? Do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I put you there on a hit up, on a life stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. Be opening up to others. You will prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. In other words, we are the one that is the light of the world, where a city set on a hill that can never be hidden. People are supposed to see you and come and know Christ. People are supposed to, your, your, your life should be attractional, like sugar to ants. People should be looking at you and say, there is something about your life and I want to have it. People should be looking at a group of believers and saying, I want to have what they have. If secret court is growing, people are going to take form. I, I remember somebody said to me, he said, I took, when I was registering in the course, I went to collect form by myself to join. Why? It's attractive to him. And Jesus said, listen, listen, is there anybody that is angry with light? Have you seen somebody angry with salt? Show me any religion that says salt is bad. If they take light, everybody's like, oh. when they bring light, both people that are not worshipping together, all of a sudden, they stop worshipping one person or one company. 
It doesn't matter, boy, girl, everybody. If you are in darkness or you are in a lonely road and there is no light, the moment you see light, there is hope that comes. We are supposed to be hope bringers. And that's what Jesus was saying. So today I want to talk about winning friends to Christ and influencing life change. Winning friends to Christ and influencing life change. Winning friends to Christ and influencing life change. I, I, I've seen many people just tell me, how can I do this that you are telling me to do? Winning friends to Christ is strategic investment. And the question I should ask, how many unbelieving friends do you have? I hope you know that it's very few. Or it's getting fewer and fewer and fewer. The more you become, the, more, the, the longer you are a Christian, the less unbelieving friends you have. And we, we, don't, we don't go out of our way to make friends. In fact, when they see you making friends with unbelievers, they can even report you to church. Just imagine, you see, sometimes when we read the story of Zacchaeus, we are just, we just uh, bring the life chain. Forget it. Do you know it's Zacchaeus? A tax collector. Who dupes people? Then, uh, thank you. Then I'm going on the road with Pastor Dale. Pastor Dale, we are going, and I see the, the person, I say, I want to come to your house for dinner. If you hear, what will you say? Huh? So, if Jesus comes now, we will still crucify him. They call Jesus the friend. He said, why do your why do your master eat with sinners and tax collectors? Sinners and tax collectors. You don't group tax collectors with general sinners. They are special breed of sinners. And Jesus was always with them. There's a political spirit that many of us have. A political spirit. Pilate brought water and washed his hands. That's the political spirit. And not join them. Many of us have it. And the question I should ask myself, if I see you as friends with those people, how will I look at you? Sometimes we become friends to them, not because we want to win them, but because we want to win their pocket. So if you have not tamed your appetite, after a while, they will win you. You will now be asking us, eh uh-huh. You see, I'm, I'm looking at it the other way. You say, well, they don't go to church, but they have good heart. Oh. Has anybody have a, who has a good heart? So, if you are the city set on a hill, why are you hiding? If you are the light of the world, why are you putting your light under a basket? You know, throughout the festive period, I was moving about and I said, look at harvest. All of us are even partying with them. Now, some people's eyes have cleared now. It's not time for you to go in. 
So people are asking themselves, what did you say? I gave you money. I was dashing people money. <laughs> I, I don't know if you understand. So people are sober at home now. Next week is school fees. Now, and, and what are we going to do? Are we going to laugh at them? Or we are to say, Lord, here's the harvest, send me. Why can't we win friends and influence people? I want you to ask your friend. I see that there. How many people did you win? Did you win to Christ last year? Because Happy New Year is a year. It's a date. It's not a... <laughs> Jesus gave us two commissions. In Mark chapter 16, he said, preach the gospel to all creation. Creature. In Matthew chapter 28, it said, disciple all nations. Please, which nation are you discipling? Resources that will come into your hand huh, is based on the assignment that he has given you. So question, who are you deliberately Mentoring for Christ. Sometimes we are not growing in our Christian faith because there's nobody watching you. There's nobody you are you are you are you are mentoring that like Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Who is following you? Why will I not behave? Why will I behave badly in that office if somebody who I want to win to Christ is there? You know, sometimes I ask some people, say, um, is your office now for Christ? Say, yes, we are doing money devotion. Is money devotion. What if there's no money devotion? Why do you need money? To pay house rent? To buy more stuff? What if you need money to send the person that have wasted his money on alcohol this period? And the children are going to be in her tomb for one month. And you are sending the children to school because Christ sent you. There are two ways to extend the gospel, the kingdom. Just two ways. Two ways when it number one, generosity. The next one is miracles. I can get to a house and buy food for them if they are hungry. But I can also get to that same house and take one plate of rice and convert it. <laughs> Either way. So the, why can't we influence change? Number one, some of us are afraid. You are afraid. When we are going for evangelism, I, I see on people's faces. What if I go and talk to this person? What happens? And, and, and let me tell you, God does not want you to be another person for you to do evangelism. There are many of you now, by reason of the work you do, unbelievers must see you. As a pastor, how many do I see? 
Some of you liars visit you every day. <laughs> I'm telling you, some of you, people that even evangelizing you say, you get one baba. They are not angry. You know, you cannot come to my office now and say, there's one place I need to take you. But you meet these people every day. You are afraid that if you talk to them, they will reject you. That's why. And I can show you right now, somebody is looking for a friend. And the person, you know, I was talking to my friend one time in, in the U.S. He said, he said, how do you know in Nigeria? You just see a man fully, he dressed very well, but he will just bone up. That's in Nigeria. For, forget about their boning, they are dying. Some people are looking for you to come and pray for them. Some people are, used to, are, are looking for you to say hello, then, then they will download all their problems to you. Why are you afraid? If God has sent you and somebody rejects you, it's not you they rejected. Oh, I, I don't know if you understand. If the governor sends you to a place, when you get to that place, they will treat you like the governor. Because you are representing him there. What is due to him is what they will give to you. The king has sent you. Anybody that rejects you is not rejecting you, is rejecting the king. And all you need to do is to dust your feet and go forward. Let's not even go further. The woman you married now, was it the first you were like it? Did they reject you? <laughs> Some of you four times. But you went forward. You counted it as loss. And you moved ahead. Number two. Some of us are saying I don't have all the head knowledge. And that's what my wife was saying on Sunday. Which head knowledge? Do you, you know all the Bible? Sometimes some people will ask me some things. Thinking that I should know everything. I will say give me tomorrow. You don't need to have the head knowledge. Tell them your story. All I know. Yesterday I was blind. <laughs> But now I can see. Have you ever ha- asked that man, madman of Gadera, that was healed? What happened to him? Je- he said, I want to follow you, Jesus. Jesus said, No, go back to your people. And when Jesus came to the Hercapolis again, he saw that the whole place, a significant change has taken place. What would the man be telling people? Once I was mad. If you want to wait to know all the Bible before you preach, you will die. It's in the grave you'll be preaching. And if there's no preaching there, I'm telling you, every day is a new revelation to you. Nobody is a master of God. Nobody. All you need to tell the person is your own story. And the question we should be asking, how do we care for people? How do we influence them? I want to show you four things. That anybody can do, anybody can do, is for you, for caring for others and planting seeds. You see, going for evangelism or trying to win somebody to Christ, listen. Okay, let me try to put it. All of us here, your soul has not been properly won. No. Ah. The day you said, today I choose to follow Jesus, the process just started. Some of us here, your world view is not Jesus at all. You keep malice more than devil. Is Jesus happy with you? Yes. Last year, only your disposition was one out of these 12 gates of the soul. <laughs> we are still coming. That's why, that's why people say, I have, uh, I've been going to church, I don't tire. You are not yet. What is tiring you is that your soul is not fully one. I've seen many Christians saying, that's why I be. I took the verse. No, that's not how you are. It's what you learn. It's how you learn how to survive. I'm telling you. So your soul, we are still, you see, you are saved, you are being saved, and you will be saved. Right now, you have been saved. 
But uh, the reason why you are here now is that you are being saved. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's why you need new. You need another word to tell you. So you now say, "Oh, there are some women." When you tell them submission, they say, no, until he loves me, I won't submit. Your will is in problem. Has not been saved at all. You are the master of your will. So, we need to now get to the... We are we're constantly winning our soul. We are constantly working our soul. And so, the, seed, the first seed I want you to plant is the plant the seeds of contact. Make that first contact. The seed of contact. Stop running away from those who do not, who do not know Christ. It is easier for us to plant a church in a Christian community than to plant it in a, play, in a community that do not know Christ. Maybe one day you see me coming from here. Coming out from an imam's house. Augusta, what would you tell me? Maybe that's too far fetched. You're in an office and every person is talking about this person in a bad light. And every day people see you coming out from the person's office. Do you know that sometimes our opinion about people is what people told you? Yeah. It's, it's what somebody told you. You have no, especially in this era of social media, many of us do not have opinion of our own. At all. Because many of us think that Facebook is research. Jesus stopped and said, Zacchaeus, I want to be in your house today. And everybody revolted. He has gone to the house of a sinner. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 21 to 23, give our regard to every Christian you meet. Our friends here say hello. All the Christians here, especially the believers who work in the palace of Caesar, want to be remembered to you. Receive and experience the amazing grace of the master Jesus Christ deep within yourself. Apostle Paul was changed as a prisoner. And as a prisoner in Rome, if you don't get out for yourself, you die. They don't get out for you. Today in Italy, you still have house arrest. Yes, they still have house arrest. You will be in your house, but you will not leave your house. You think they will come and be feeding you? They won't come and feed you. But being chained to a prisoner, all those ones are giving their life one after the other. No wonder Constantine did not have any choice but to say he has seen Jesus. Because even in his palace, people were giving their life to him. He said the people in Caesar's palace want to be remembered to you. Contact. Who are you going to sow a, a, a seed of contact this week? Maybe that phone call, maybe that boy or that girl that's by your house. Every day you see her dress. She's always going out. Her work starts by 8 p.m. And she's not, she, 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 she's not online. She's not anything. Her sleep time is during the day. Five o'clock she started making up. She make up for two hours. The first contact is that did you, did you send food to her? Some people say one of the ways to a man's heart is through the stomach. What about the way to a sinner's heart? Do you know your presence can cause a change in somebody's life? Just your presence. The Bible says at the mention of, at the sound of your voice, they shall come out from their hiding places. Who will you call today? Who will you send a message to? 
You know, as believers, we, we can like to block people. We like to delete numbers. Say, I'm true with him. I'm done. The way you are even deleting the number, if care is not taken, the screen of your phone will break. I delete, I delete. As a rule, I don't delete number. <laughs> now you are looking for the person's number. <laughs> Contact. 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 It may be a dev- the devotional you are sending every day. It may be a word of prayer you are sending every day. It may be that you are visiting the person once a week in your neighborhood. You, you know, now we are behaving like, because we have been watching all this Hollywood film, everything, we are now behaving like, like I, I don't know who stays around me and I don't care. Really. Until you are choking one night. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Mm. Mm. Whatever. Listen contact do you know the people living on your street I was listening to a pastor when he was telling the people that was living in his, in his area in the US I was shocked I want to just carry out your walk come back sleep how will you disciple people how will you preach the gospel to all creation Say, I don't like people to step in my business because I don't step in their business too. Depression is your case. <laughs> you know why? You are complaining you don't have money until you see somebody that doesn't have food. I'm telling you, because sometimes some of the things that you see you, that, is, that is bugging you around me, I'll be wondering, really? This is what making you to cry. Don't deprive those that are outside the kingdom of your presence. So a seed of contact. You know, sometimes one wants to do evangelism, we call it pub- we just do publicity. We go here, share and be, go here, share and be. Before we come here again, two months. That's why sometimes I, I, I like the Jehovah Witness style of, of going. They will visit one person for six months. Sometimes they mean you one year. Every Saturday. If you say you are washing, they'll say, okay, we'll wait. (laughs) And you know the funniest thing? They are not even telling you to come to our church. They'll start with a question. We're trained. From the question they go ahead you'll be arguing they'll be talking to you <laughs> tomorrow on saturday they say don't worry we'll see you again they are very patient they are not this thing after a while they will win you in your house you'll be the one that will tell them can i follow you to your listen all this fire brigade that put boom 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 we don't have disciples. Number two, con- seed. I want you to plant. Plant the seeds of prayer. Number two, the seed of prayer. The seed of prayer. Look for that girl that is very troublesome. That girl, we know the year word. Pray. We complain about people too much. He's stepping on my nerves. In fact, it's cheese on my last nerve now. I will explode. Really? If you can't, if you can't manage me now that both of us are calling upon Jesus, is he the one that is calling on Hare Krishna? Sometimes 
Sometimes when I'm out there, I hear the F word anyhow. And as they are saying it, I'm not bothered. I want to, mm, what do you say? <laughs> That's their normal language. If you like, shout from now to tomorrow. It's inside. <laughs> I, I would say, mm, don't you know I'm a pastor? Don't say that bad thing around me. They won't talk again when you get there. But you know what? Before you take Jesus to them, before you take your contact to them, take them to the one who changes. Pray. Do you know that many people want our leaders to work well? Abi? You want them to govern well? Huh? 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 Why are you insulting them? <laughs> you know what I feel? You feel that when you insult people, they will not change and say, come, come for insulting me. Come to my house. Come and eat with me. <laughs> no. I, 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 I'm wondering. One of the most hated person in this country today is our president. And, and, and we are we are proud him. We are proud him. <laughs> Just anyhow, mm, insult. Mm. And you are a believer. How is insult coming from your mouth? Or you think it's not a child of God too? It was created in the image of devil. Eh? <laughs> you, you see, sometimes I just wonder how it plus the seed of prayer. The Bible says in um, Philippians 1 3 to 4, it's everything.